Today we're speaking to Prof. Francois Deacon from Animal Science. Welcome, Francois. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Carmen. So tell us all, how did you become a researcher? Yeah, it's always interesting where you start off. I mean, I never anticipated becoming a researcher or even being in the academic world. But growing up camping and uh, exploring in a family that we used to, uh, every weekend we would go somewhere or camp, family, um, you tend to get that endless curiosity of searching for things and trying to understand how nature works and realizing how limited uh, natural ecosystems and wildlife is becoming on the African continent, um, which is my passion to see uh, animals in a natural con uh, state and, and, and resources. Um, it opened a career for me and uh, yeah, never thought about that 15, 20 years ago, but now I'm 100% committed to that. It's lovely, you clearly have a passion for what you're doing. So tell us, what are you currently working on? Yeah, multiple things. Uh, as science evolved over the years, uh, primarily most 90% of my time was dedicated to giraffe uh, conservation and research efforts. Uh, but now I'm also working on rhinos, uh, South African or continent, uh, the, the rhinos we have, black, white rhinos, but also internationally. I'm assisting with the Java and Sumatra rhinos in Indonesia, big project we, we're running there. Um, and also in the Himalayas and Pakistan, we're going to color now in the next month, we're flying to uh, Pakistan uh, in the Himalayas to go and catch and color brown bears, Himalayan brown bears. Never been done before. Um, we went there searching for them last year and we could only locate two. So not just giraffe, there's multiple things that we're busy with and yeah, it's nice. Just checking, you're not so, going to try and wrestle with me. We might, because I mean you dart them and you don't know how they react. And you're lying in the tent at two in the morning and you dart a, a Himalayan brown bear and it's just never been done. You don't even know what drugs is going to uh, be used and the effect it's going to have on the animal. Will they, will he fly, a uh, flight? Um, or run away, or will he attack? We don't know. Oh my. Yeah. Wishing you strong for that one. Thanks, that should thanks. be interesting. Yeah. Tell me, what research gaps have you identified in your field? I think uh, for students is the lack of, of interest. The interest of what we have, the, the jewels and the, the hidden uh, environments that we that's unexplored in Africa. And to me, it, I made it a priority teaching students to, to fall in love with nature again, really, to notice the small things, to, to understand the butterfly and the scorpion and the snake uh, equally as well as you would want to understand the rhinos or giraffe or predators. So to me, it's that, that, that complete lack of interest. And I, th I made it my role and my responsibility being at the university to try and bring that back. And then, yeah, there's everything ev around every corner, the more research you do, the more questions you actually uh, create and, and you have less answers and and I, I think that's it's a good thing for science but you need in my my line of uh, research I, I wish there, there had been 50 or 100 researchers but I can count less than a handful of people that are working on on the continent uh, active with giraffe conservation um, uh, rhino conservation real conservation efforts locally and globally so it's it's limited in science, and it's not the, always the glamorous species that gets the attention, but um, yeah, it's my priority to try and change that. That's absolutely amazing. What words of wisdom would you share with aspiring researchers? What would you like to tell them? Yes, yeah, it's, that again is a good question. I think from my experience, if a, if a student comes with a little of his own interest, I want to develop that interest. And those students become magic one day because you help them to build on their own dreams and, and uh, yeah, create uh, opportunities for them. And once you went, if the door is slightly open, you want to you wanna help them to push open the door and, and enter a world of science. So for me, it's, um, if, if I don't help students to, to, to build that passion, that natural instinct of, of an interest they might have, uh, who's who's going to do that? So it's a, it's a, a responsibility that I have, a moral value that I need to um, 
take care of for, for myself, but also for the students. So once they pursue a scientific career, the sky is the limit. I, I could tell you all kinds of stories of, of uh, uh, the research we're doing and the stuff we're investigating now that gets me excited. And it's just uh, never been noticed before. It's just never been studied before. And I need 15, 20 PhD students um, to get involved with that from what we are doing now. So, um, yeah, there's so many opportunities. It's just the student must come from his side and you must, you must expose them to ideas, but you must also dream with them and develop that with them and not just leave them in the dark. Both Deacon, I love, love, love your passion. And I think you're in a very fascinating field. Now tell me, um, what the final question, what do you do for relaxation? I play with animals all day, but what do you do for relaxation? <laughs> My best happy place is when I can be in, in the field camping somewhere on a dune in a remote area and not see people. <laughs> <laughs> so when there's no signal and no people for weeks, it's, it's my happy place. Yeah. So it could be anywhere in Africa. I've been fortunate. I think if I can count 22, 20, 24 African countries, I've, I've seen, uh, uh, thankfully, because of research and, and uh, the exposure I had at the university. And um, that make me, made me realize that there's, there's very few places left on the continent to be explored. And it's always almost as if you don't want to... I have a saying that um, uh, you don't want to die with dreams. You want to die you with to memories. Them, yes. Yeah, yes. so just having dreams is not enough. You want to tick off the dreams and you want to put them in, a, in the memory box. So my goal is to, to travel, explore, and expose my kids to it. Um, and as long as my kids is in the house, every year I'll show them in a new African country. And in, not in a luxurious way, we'll go camping and sleep in hammocks and under mosquito nets. But to expose my kids equally, uh, um, that I want to expose my students. I'm sure those are definitely happy kids. Prof Deacon, thank you so much for your time. And we wish you the best in your endeavors and your adventures. The sky's the limit. Thank you, Keep Carmen. dreaming and keep living. Thank you, thank I you. will, yeah. Thank you for this opportunity. I appreciate it. All right, thank you.